folks have had a subscriber ask me to do a, a, a kind of a blast from the past sort of deal here using Adobe Premiere Pro CS4 and I've been using CC, CS5, CS6 and most of my tutorials have been but I do have a computer here that I haven't used in a long time still has CS4 Premiere Pro on it and he wants me to do the Ken Burns effect because he's having some trouble using one of my I guess CS6 tutorials so I've opened up Premiere Pro C, uh, CS4. Forgive me for the strange camera angle here. I'm having to shoot over my shoulder. I'm in a kind of a back bedroom that I don't use very often. I'm gonna do a new project. And let's just call it uh, Ken Burns. And we'll say, okay, I don't just need to be in Highland Games, but we can put it over here somewhere. My documents is fine. I'm putting it in my documents. We'll say, okay. So uh, I'm guessing he's probably going to do it in 1080p 30. Most people, I believe, will. I'm going to go to the a AVCHD up here and choose 1080p because it's going to be progressive. So I'm going to use that setting because it's you know that's just a setting I like. I'm comfortable with using. This could be called anything down here. Sequence one, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it Ken Burns. And we'll say okay. And the Ken Burns effect for those of you who don't know, most most video editor people will know what that means. Ken Burns is a um, man who became famous for doing sort of panning and scaling photos. In other words, just the photos that move around, documentary style photos. Let me try to get my, there we go. Now I've got my Premiere Pro where it fits all up in the screen very well. So once again, I apologize for the angles I'm using here. So I already have, uh, since I put in a sequence name of Ken Burns, I already have a sequence down here at the bottom. It is, it says Ken Burns. I'm going to import some photos. I'm not sure where I even have them on the hard drive. This computer, but I know I have some photos somewhere. I, right, I double just I just double clicked inside here. Okay, here are some photos from a meeting that I shot for my wife, and so I'm going to pull a few of these photos in. These were shot to at a probably a uh, chamber luncheon or something. Here's some music being played. Let's go ahead and pull these this in. So I'm going to open these up. So I've imported just some regular JPEG photos over here, you can see. Uh, so let's pull all of these in at once into the sequence. They should have come in probably about five seconds a piece there, I would say. So I'm going to kind of zoom in on this. It's been a while since I've used CS4. I had the old zoom button there, I see right, right here at the bottom. It looks like these are five seconds each. So I have these, uh, you'll hear my pug walk just walked in. Hey Nico. Yeah, good pug. All right, so here we have these folks playing some music and stuff and uh, the meeting going on. So we want these photos to pan and scale, right? What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to or the beginning of this photo first. I'm going to go up under effects controls. I'm going to twirl down right here the motion control, or the little arrow beside the motion control there, see? And it comes up as a scale of 100%, which means there's a whole lot of pixels outside the field of view. So uh, let's let's say we want this one to zoom in. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hold over the 100 there. I'm gonna go backward with. I'm gonna drag. I'm clicked. I right clicked, and I'm dragging backward till I see what the bounds of the picture are. Right. So I'm gonna stop right about there. So it looks like at about 46 percent, this picture is about as wide as it's gonna go, and I kind of like it to zoom in. Maybe I'll have it zoom in on this guy that's talking to this fellow over here. It looks like he's saying something important. So I'm going to click on the scale button here, the toggle animation button. That's this one right here. And that has just put a keyframe in that says that we're going to start at 46%. Now I'm going to just drag forward till I get here to the end. And, and there's, there's actually a cool button you, you can go to, I think. Let's see if that's go to the next edit point. You see this one right here? Go to next edit point. If you click that button, it goes to where the separation between the photos is. And what, what the deal is, now we're seeing the first frame of, of this picture, but we want to go back one frame until we get to the very last frame of this photo right here. So I'm going to click the this little back arrow, the left arrow, and now we're to this picture. Now, at this point in time, as we've gone five seconds forward, I want to center in on these guys right here, right? So I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to about 120%. Okay, and I'm going to, going to take, there's two ways I could do this. Uh, I 
and I'm, I'm guessing that in CS4 you can still click on the picture and drag it. So let's try that and see. I'm going to click one time on the photo. That has selected it, I think. Now I'm going to try to drag it. Look at that. It does work. Now there's there's two ways we could have done it. We could do it, we could do it that way. Or we could have gone up here and we could have slid these position uh, you know, guys position number things around until we found it. And, and, and that's not a hard thing to do too. So all we've done, all we've done is, you know what we should have done? We should have done a position also. I'm just realizing. Yeah, again, you know what we did? We messed up. Let's start that again, folks. Okay. Let's pull this back. I went back. I did this the wrong way, but this is a good learning experience here. Let's put this back where it was to start. I pulled back to the very beginning. And so there's where we're going to start. Now, what I should have done, I should have clicked the position button as well. So I'm at the very first frame, right? I'm going to click that. Now we have a scale and a position frame. Now I'm going to go forward again by clicking on the go to next edit point and to go back one frame. There we go. And now we go. Now I'm going to get this one. I'm going to click on this image again. Forgive me, folks. A little different than the old version or the uh, new versions. I'm going to click one time. I'm going to pull back over to these guys. And now what do I have over time? I've got it starting doing what I want to do. I've got a position and a scale keyframe that's taking me from there to right there. Now let me try to do this next photo the right way. I'm going to click on the go to next edit point. And here I am at this one. Okay. I'm going to click on this image. Make sure this image is activated. Now I'm going to twirl the motion down again. I'm going to put a position and a scale in. Now let's say on this one that I want to start where these folks here are just looking and we're going to pan out on this. We're going to come away from this one. So I'm going to go to the next edit point again. I see a new picture, but I'm going to go back one frame. I'm clicking the, the uh, left arrow to go back one frame. And now I'm going to scale out to, let's, let's say, 50%. And I could just type 50% in here, right? Okay. And now we're going to click one time on this, and then we're going to pull it. We're going to click. So in other words, what I'm doing, I'm, I'm right-clicking on it one time. Then I'm right-clicking on it again and holding and dragging. So now what we've got, if we go down here and pull the little uh, uh, slider key or the little position uh, position thing, we've got that one zooming in and this one zooming out. Let's go ahead and just finish this one up. Now, there's, there's a, a couple, another trick you can do. You can you can copy your pans and fades too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go again to the next edit point. I'm going to click on this one. And this time... Let's do an automated couple, at least one of these. Let's say that I want to start at 70% on this. So I'm going to click 70%. And uh, at the end here, I'm going to go to the next point again. Click one arrow backward. And this time, oh, you know what? I didn't put my... God, it's so, I'm so slack this morning, folks. I'm doing this way early in the morning. Let's start this again. I'm going to go to the beginning. I already have it set at 70 now, but I'm going to click my position and scale, position and scale, toggle animations, right? Now I've got it set at 70, which is what I wanted. I'm going to go to the next edit point, and I'm going to click the back arrow once, and now I'd like for it to go out to 50. So now I'm going from 70 to 50 on that one, right? Should be 70% down to 50%. Now this next is very similar. It's, a, it's, a, it's a same, the same group of people, but they're, you know, they're a little different expression. So let's say I want the same thing to happen to this one. What, you, what I've done a lot of times in the past, let's say I have 50 pictures or 100 pictures. I'll have one that zooms in, one that zooms out, and I'll have these things programmed, right? I have a bunch of pictures out here that go on, on, on. But let's say I want the same effect I use for this one to go on this one. All you have to do to do that is go up here and click on the motion. See here? Let's click the word motion and do a control C. Then you can click on this, this next one that has no effect added to it. I'm going to do a control V. And it should pan out just the same as the other one does. And look at that, it does. Now how that's helpful is if you have a hundred photos going out here and you've got, got one style that you've already created that you like to pan in and zoom in and pan around or say you want one that zooms in and 
and pans left or zooms out and pans right. You can have a, a photo that you've already got set up that way and you can click on it and you say, oh, you know what, I'd like pictures 1 or, or 12, 36, 58, and 19 to do uh, the, the same kind of zoom as this one. That way you don't have to go in there each every time and do this. So it's, that's a little shortcut that you can use. So now what we've got, we've, we have uh, these all these photos panning and scaling. And if you want to export that to a movie, then all you have to do, and forgive me again, folks, for having to remember the old way of doing this. I'll click on this. I'll say File, Export, Media. And I'm guessing from CS4, still it's an H.264 is going to be your best way to do this. Uh, H.264, I'm not going to use that. I don't want to use that preset. I have a whole bunch of presets I've set up in the past. Uh, and so you won't have all these presets. These are things I've created back a long time ago when I used this program pretty much exclusively. Hmm, I'm guessing HDTV 1080p 2997 high quality might be really good. Let me look and see if that's progressive. Field order is progressive. So that's going to be the probably the best way to do it because you're not interlaced. And I see it gives you a 32 and a 40. That's going to be very high quality. So if I were to export, say that, go ahead and export that. And it's going to go to my Highland Games folder. It doesn't matter. I'll just go ahead and do it anyway. It shouldn't take too long to do that. It's going to open an Adobe Media Encoder. CS4. And it looks like it's going to, is it going to auto start? Okay, I guess back in the old days you had to do the start queue. Well, it's funny how I just used this maybe three or four years ago. Now I've, I've uh, totally forgotten how this works. So that's going to work pretty quickly, it looks like. We'll fast forward and come to the end of this when it's rendered out. Okay, so that's just finished rendering. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go to that Highland Games folder, which is not the folder it should have gone into, but let's just go ahead and there anyway. Um... Here it is, and here is our untitled clip. I guess this must be oh, Ken Burns. Here we go. So I'm going to right click on this. You're not going to hear anything, of course. We didn't put any music or anything under it. Should come up in Windows Media Player, and here are my zooms. We zoom in on those guys. We'll probably zoom out on this next bunch. This is going a little choppy looking because it's an older computer with an older processor in it, but that should operate very smoothly. And we should have the same kind of thing here, different. And there you go, Ken Burns effect added to uh, four pictures and created into a video using Adobe Premiere Pro CS4. Uh, my apologies again for forgetting to hit some of my uh, position and scale things here. This is highly the, probably the most important thing to remember when you get to the beginning of each one of these images. And uh, that's a very cool shortcut here. Just go to next edit points. You don't have to drag around to it and try to find it. But be sure to put your, you, to toggle your position and scale first. And then uh, on the first frame, put what your opening frame needs to be. Go to the next edit and do your back arrow and then put your locations for where you want the others to be. You can either drag them here or you can just drag it around with your, uh, you, have to right, you have to right click. I'm saying right click, I'm sorry, I mean, I mean left click. Lord, I have been, I've done the worst tutorial here.